when it's all said and done, when the weave comes off, when the makeup comes off, when the lashes come off, and when the waist trimmer comes off, who do you have after all of that? <laughs> right, who do you, re that's, what, that's what you really wanna get down to. What's up everybody, I'm King. And I'm Angela. We're here to talk about how to vet a woman. We've heard from a lot of you that want an intentional relationship, but how do you separate out these women that are entitled and they're takers, they have high expectations. How do you separate them out from a quality woman? As a man that have been on a few dates before I found my person. What? Um, I, yes, a few oh days, a few, God. I, I mean like two. We are gonna talk about <laughs> this. Dated other people before me? <laughs> One or two, only two, babe, I promise okay, you. Right. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> No, but seriously, as being a person that uh, goes on dates, you see many things, you see many attributes, a lot of them unfavorable, um, as you kind of sift through the crowd out there. And there are so many takers. What we're seeing in our questions from our audience is how do you set limits from, you know, for takers because the takers don't know how to set the limits and that's why the givers have to. There is a sea of takers out there and I'm here to help you guys out. And this is for the men only. I know the ladies are showing up. This is gonna help you too. I'm here to help everyone in this scenario. Men, this is what you should do. Ladies, this is what a quality man is looking for. I know that we're looking for quality on each side, so here mm -hmm. goes. Number one, you're gonna show less. People tend to display and showcase and tend to exhibit the things that they attain. You work hard, you build a life, you build a career. You want people to see it sometimes. But not all the times, the people that come into your life that you're trying to get to know, there are certain things that they don't need to know up front. You got to build your way up to things and your possessions, your financial status, all those things matter when bringing someone new in your life that could be a potential long-term partner. We had a long distance relationship, so we had spent at least 20 hours on FaceTime yeah. calls before we met. And the first time we met was at a neutral location and he was in a rental car. I had no idea what his status was or anything like that. It wasn't, to me, that wasn't the most important quality. It wasn't on my list. It was <laughs> more the qualities and demand I was looking for. And the first time that I came to his house, um, he picked me up in, in the airport in a Honda. Was it a Honda? Yeah, Honda okay. Court. Goldie. I'm bad with cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it had a crack in the windshield and it made sense to me because one time we were on the phone, he was like, oh, this crack is getting bigger in my windshield. So I didn't think anything of it when he picked me up from the airport in his car with the cracked windshield. That was cool. And we spent like the whole day and the next day like, working on this project together and yep. having a beautiful time. And um, came back to his house. I went upstairs to get a shower and we got ready to go out to dinner. And um, I came down into the garage and opened the door and I thought I was in the wrong house because there was like a brand new Tesla parked in the garage. And I was like, what? It took me a minute to figure out where I was. And then he told me that he um, borrowed it from a friend. Yeah, I borrowed a car from a friend. <laughs> him because I thought his car was the Honda and so which, which is my car I didn't lie so we got, we got, I was like oh my gosh that was so special you bought a car for our special night out for our date night and I still believed him and then after we were in the car for like five or ten minutes I, I had never been in Tesla before I was like how do you how do you know how to drive this thing so well like it's very different and then he like sped around this corner I was like wait a minute like you've driven this before <laughs> <laughs> And then he admitted that it was his car. But to his point of showing less, like that, I didn't know well into our dating career. Like I didn't know where he stood or what he had or didn't have. Cause it's not something he made a big deal about. I didn't know what his house looked like or, well, I didn't even ask what you did for a job. So people ask questions up front, like, you know, what do you do? We never ask each other, what do, we, yeah. what do you do um, for the first few months? Mm -hmm. I, to me, it's a turn off when someone asks me, what do I do? Because they're classifying me based on what it is that I bring to them. What I do is not important. Mm -hmm. It's the matter of showing up, giving you the love, giving you the care mm -hmm. and being a quality person. Mm -hmm. We're people first. Oh, but because I do this, I qualify to be in your life. But if I don't qualify to be in your life based on a particular career that I have, then we probably shouldn't be talking. When I FaceTimed her, I pretty much had a neutral background behind me. I have a mm -hmm. few bare walls in my house. 
Mm -hmm. I never showed my bed. I never showed my closet. I never showed my clothes. I never showed my car. I didn't show elements of my house. I just was into her, into the conversation. And there's a lot to discover and slowly unfold within the relationship. Now, there was the Instagram connection and she could get a bit of um, insight from social media. Mm -hmm. And that is a bit telling, right? So all in all, show less on social media, tell less, but still have an engaging, attracting conversation. So show less if you wanna attract a woman that is not valuing you for your things. Number two, you're gonna ask quality questions. Now we can put together a list of questions for you. If you want those questions, email us at loveheartbreakhope at gmail.com. We'll gladly get those questions to you. So quality questions would be asking things that center around what's important to her or like, tell me what your best friends are like, or those sorts of things like, what would you say your top three values are in life? Or those sorts of things that are going to draw out more of her qualities and understanding who she is as a person versus like, yeah. what did you do today? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what do you like to do in your free time? Or things like things that you could like read off of a piece of paper, like actually asking quality questions. What has been the best life experience that you've had over the past 30 days? Mm -hmm. What book are you reading? Or really understanding, like asking like, so what? What didn't work out about your last relationship? And not just accepting a one-line answer, mm -hmm. but really like trying to dig in. And if this woman opens up to you, yeah. clearly she's showing a level of transparency. If she kind of closes up or whatever, you know, you're going to have issues probably moving forward with trust. Because yeah. trust is based on your level of openness and transparency. And dive deeper into the following questions. When a person asks a question or answers a question, just like pull on that thread especially when you know that there's more there. Stop for a minute. If you're getting value from what we're saying, please share this video, subscribe, mm -hmm. let's keep rolling. I think it really helped up front that we spent so much time um, having FaceTime calls because there wasn't any money exchange, mm -hmm. right? Like he wasn't taking me out, whining, dining me. I didn't see any of his stuff or how he lived. We were just asking mm -hmm. like really yeah. quality questions, having quality conversations. And I would say, even if you live in the same city as someone, to spend several hours on the phone with them, FaceTime, because you can read expressions and yeah. you can see how they're responding and if they can make eye contact and that sort of thing. If you want to build a quality relationship, if you're dating for that intention, like spend a, put the time in to have some quality phone calls before you actually take that person out. Yeah. People are gonna put their best foot forward reach for the unpolished version of the person. Because with people putting their best foot forward, everything is gonna be perfect. You're gonna likely learn to love the imperfections about this person too. Mm -hmm. So you right- You know what that reminds me? What's that? Remember one, one time you called me, it's maybe like our third or fourth call and I didn't have makeup on. <laughs> and I was like, I think it was at night. And I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, oh, I don't look great. And you're like, it's okay. Because I was just saying maybe we could call instead of FaceTime. Mm -hmm. And like, I, we had, we just talked anyway. And of course he's like, you look beautiful anyway. Yeah, don't let him <laughs> get out of it, man. Don't, don't let him get out of it. You can just always, this is a standard line you can use. And it wasn't a line because this is my truth. But just tell us she looks beautiful anyway. Tell us she looks even more beautiful without the makeup. But the unpolished looks are very important. And I would say too, men tend to be very visual. So um, I think it could be easy. I'm not a man, but I think it could be easy if you're just going on dates and she looks gorgeous. She looks mm -hmm. amazing. And you can be like smitten in a sense because your eyes are drawing you and kind of blinding you to the actual like, actually we gotta step back a little bit removed yeah. and actually hear what she's saying, like vetting out her qualities because you're a little bit mesmerized by how beautiful she looks. So I think it's great to put her in more natural situations or having phone calls where you're not as, it's like knowing your weakness, right? Protecting your weak spot. <laughs> and like not, you know, being able to kind of um, protect yourself from getting sucked into someone's looks and not really listening through to who this person is behind the makeup or behind the beautiful outfit. Yeah, because you want a beautiful mind too. At least for me, I do. I want mental mm -hmm. simulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it's all said and done, when the weave comes off, when the makeup comes off, when the lashes come off, or when the waist trimmer comes off, who do you have after all of that? 
Right, who do you, re that's what That's what you really want to get down to. Don't get him started on lashes <laughs> and weaves. <laughs> that's another video, babe, you can talk about that. Last but not least, reciprocity. Look for reciprocity. There's kind of a culture out there right now where women expect to be treated like queens or princesses. And I'm not saying women don't deserve to be treated like queens, but queens earn their spot on the throne. Like You have to have you know, queen-like behavior. Yeah, and you have, you have to, to be a queen, like not just get entitled to be treated like one because you're a female. Because like, somebody told you you were. Right, not everybody in the kingdom is a queen. Some people are the servants. Some people are <laughs> the cook. Some people are just like the townspeople. Not everyone's a queen. So you don't get to call yourself that unless you actually embody the qualities that make somebody worthy of that title. So Talking like, about a but, proverb 31 woman. Do you know that that woman <laughs> invested? She was a wise woman. She was a kind woman. She cared about people. She was known for her wisdom. So this kind of toxic culture out there is that a woman um, thinks she's a princess or, or a queen and that a man should just serve her and treat her and, you know, like a princess. And um, what is she reciprocating? Mm -hmm. So I think um, when this look for reciprocation is look for someone who, if you do something for them, truly emits gratitude, not just verbally, but like you can really sense the gratitude and the appreciation for what you've done for them um, versus the entitlement of like, well, pff, you should do that. You're the man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be paying for the date anyway. And here, Tell the story about that girl that you took on a date. Oh yeah, so uh, one of the two people that I took on a date. Oh, right, right. <laughs> So I'm sitting there with this girl and I think, you know, we're vibing, things are good. And I'm getting ready for my birthday trip to Hawaii. And I mentioned that I'm going to Hawaii and I don't know if she was waiting on her invite or what, but she's just out of the blue says, well, if I'm going anywhere with a man, he's paying. Oh, right then and there, I just checked out. I said, well, I guess this is over. <laughs> Before it even got started. And why? But say why that bothered you. There was there was zero effort. There was a sense of entitlement to where a man is supposed to take care of you from head to toe. I think that that sense of entitlement is poisoning our, our culture. It also bothered me because she was a taker. You can't start out being a taker, okay? So as we wrap up, here's what you're looking for for someone that's gonna show you reciprocity. You're gonna look for mutuality. You're gonna look for effort, right? If you make a phone call, Let's say it doesn't have to be take for tat, but if you're making a phone call, you're making two, three phone calls to her, that dang, she should at least call you back like once or twice. Um, there should be mutual interest. I was working on a project. I'm on the phone with her and up pulls this guy and I don't know, some old beat up car. And he brings a little package to the door, brown paper bag. And I said, babe, somebody's coming to the door with a package. I didn't order anything. She's like, well, let's just go see what it is. This woman has ordered me some. Uber Eats, oh my gosh, delicious, on time, on point. This is her being proactive, being intuitive. So that's who you want. Someone that's gonna be serving, someone that's gonna be observant, and someone that's gonna give life. Another point of reciprocity that you want is someone that's invested in you emotionally. Someone that you can um, count on to tell your, share your feelings with, share your, your heart's desires, mm -hmm. uh, even share your struggles. Um, you'll be surprised sometimes how many answers that woman can have uh, to satisfy that thing that you can't seem to resolve yourself. Reciprocity doesn't always look like the same thing. Like if you take her on a date and pay for dinner, that doesn't mean she takes you on a date and pays for dinner. That means maybe the way she reciprocates is through gratitude or for with a follow-up text or maybe the next day she you know, leaves a surprise on your doorstep or sends you mm -hmm. a really nice message, something like that. Something that she's responding with gratitude and appreciation um, and other things, other special things she's doing to make you, let you know that she cares, that she wants to give, that she wants to help you, that she wants to serve you in some way. And reciprocity too also looks like being able to um, have a woman to show up with her uh, card or wallet or cash every now and then. I do believe in men leading the way. I do believe in men being gentlemen. I do believe in men leading. Uh, it does make me feel good that if I'm, I never ask for anything, but if I'm in a place, like this woman shows up and she said, babe, I just wanna do this for you, right? We're in a store and they had a shirt and the shirt wasn't in my size. How about two weeks later, that shirt comes up in my mailbox 
and I had no idea where it came from, but this woman just gets it done, <laughs> right? So sometimes, listen, I want you to hear me carefully. This is not about women stepping up financially. Right. This is about knowing the value that that woman brings to your life that is priceless. You mm -hmm. cannot put the value on what a good woman will bring into your life. And we just wanna help you to vet out the good women from the, the ones takers. who are entitled mm -hmm. and are just gonna sit back like looking for a ride or looking for your assets or the great attributes about you to benefit their lives without looking to be a blessing and a benefit in a mutual way to you. Correct, and if she can't help you build, then don't let her tear you down. You have traditionally dated women who have entitled attitudes and expect you to give them money and buy them things and do all this stuff and they're not reciprocating in some sort of way. It doesn't have to be financial, but in some sort of way, adding value to your life, maybe a way to start vetting them is don't do anything that costs money the first day. Take a walk in the park. Go do a workout. Or How about that? Go get coffee. A dollar, okay, I guess that's, I guess that's a dollar fifty, but <laughs> go get some coffee or something that's super just neutral, not a lot of investment. And if she reciprocates with gratitude and has a great time with you, you probably got a quality one on your hand. So these are some ways you can vet a woman. We want you to have an amazing relationship. And part of that is finding a partner that's gonna complement your life, add value to you. We know there's, because we're reading your comments, we know there's mm -hmm. a lot of like toxic women out there. There's some poor attitudes and mentalities out in dating culture. We're trying to help you sift through how to vet out women that are just gonna feel entitled and expect you to do everything without adding value to yeah. your life. Mm -hmm. um, and know that, know, know that you deserve that. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot of women talking about, I deserve, I deserve. You as men deserve stuff too. Up your standards, up your game, realize what you will and won't tolerate, stick to it. If you have to leave a woman standing there cold and shook, do it. <laughs> hey, that sounds mean. It, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gonna have to deliver the message. No better person than you. All right, well, we hope this helped and we hope that you find an amazing woman if you want a quality long-term relationship. Sound and off. You can follow some of this guy's tips for how he <laughs> how he tested and vetted me to make sure I wasn't a taker. But this woman is everything that one could ever dream of or ask for. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> so until next time, do subscribe to this channel, share this to, to people that are looking for high value men. Women, take notes, know what a man is looking for. We'll see you in the next video. Until next time. Keep healing. Keep loving. And old hope, baby. You look stumped. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't hear it. <laughs> that is not valuing ye. Last, um, so last but not, so last but not. Mm -hmm. And rest, re re oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this hope, it, did we, no. it sounds like a hemorrhoid commercial. <laughs> <laughs> She is everything that one could ask for or ever dream of. She is everything that the doctor ordered. That sounds like a hemorrhoid. <laughs>